HMI how to read music note values so I'm putting together some really really basic music theory lessons exactly the same way as I teach it in the classroom in school so when you start to read music there is only really two things you need to know what note to play and that will depend where it sits on the stave and I've done lessons on how to read music for both treble and bass clef but also you need to know how long to play the note for in other words the note value and that will depend on what the note looks like so the first note value is a semi brief or whole note okay it lasts for four beats and it's just a plain circle and would sit on the stave now then next to the semi brief is a little funny symbol that's the rest now then a musician needs to know when not to play and rest to the symbols that say don't play all right so a semi brief rest is a little block and it sits underneath the line and we've got the minim or half note all right now a minim is a circle with a tail you don't color it in at this point all right and a minim is worth two beats and the rest symbol for a minim is very similar all right it's a little rectangle but this time it sits on top of the line so a minim or a half note lasts for two beats a crotchet or a quarter note is a black note in other words it's a circle that's been colored in and it's got a tail and a crotchet lasts for one beat and then you've got that funny funny symbol like a squiggle okay and that's the rest symbol for a crotchet or a quarter note okay so a quaver yeah I know it's a cheese flavored crisp but in music a quaver is a note that lasts for half a beat and it can be called an eighth note as well all right it's a black note it's got a tail but it's also got a little feather in fact I'll draw you a quaver now okay there's a reason for me doing this so that is a single quaver but sometimes you see quavers written like that in other words can you see the little bar that goes across the top when you've got more than one quaver you join them up like that okay so a quaver is worth half a beat but if you add up two halves what do you get a crotchet one beat all right now the rest symbol for a quaver looks like a little seven all right so it looks very different to the other rests we've seen so far and the last note value I'm going to do today is called a semi quaver or a sixteenth note or beat. All right, it's a black note, it's got the tail and the feather like a quaver, but it's got an extra feather. I'll draw one of those. So it's the black note, tail, and two feathers. All right, and like a quaver, if you're drawing more than one of them, you join them up at the top. All right, each one of those is worth a quarter of a beat. So four quarters equals one whole. All right, four quarters equals a crotchet. And the semi quaver rest is just like the quaver rest, a little seven, but it's got a double line on it too. Now again, the way I teach quavers in music theory in class is slightly different to the way I would teach it on an instrument. On an instrument, you're instantly making music so you can count yourself. In this case, we do a lot of clapping exercises in school and I would teach the students how to learn note values but using words. So for example, a crotchet, bum, it's just one syllable. I might use the word ant. A 
quaver or two quavers, all right, I need two syllables to be able to get the right beat to that. So I might go with something like spider, bum bum. And then if I'm going for semi quavers, all right, I'm thinking of a word that would have four syllables. Caterpillar, okay? And if you start putting different rhythms together, you can get different words, for example, butterfly or dung beetle. Now I've stayed away from the stave for a minute, okay? Because I didn't want to get confusion going on with note names as well as note values. But there are a couple of other things we need to consider when we're looking at really, really basic theory. So I'm gonna add a clef just for a moment. I've done a video on treble and bass clef, so I'm gonna use treble clef just for now. Then I'm gonna add something else at the beginning of the music. Four, four, that is called a time signature. Okay, that again is really important, all right? Because what the time signature does is tells us how many beats we have in a bar. What do you mean bar? What, like is it a wine bar or a gold bar? No. We divide music into bars or measures. They can be called in America as well. All right, how do we do that? By using our time signature. So I'm gonna write a rhythm. I'm not gonna use note names, all right, but I do want to use different note values and hopefully explain how bars and time signatures work. Right, so I've used some different note values there. The point of the time signature is to tell us how many beats are in each bar. What is this bar, right? I've got to count to four each time. So looking back at our note values for a second, a minim is worth two, crotchets are worth one, so that's one, two, three, four. I would add a bar line. Minims, one, two, another minim, three, four. I'm gonna add a bar line. Half, because they're quavers, so half and half is one plus one for a crotchet, plus a minim. And then my very last note is a semi breathe. It's worth four. Bar, 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 and a very little bar at the end. So when a musician is playing and reading music, they're not just starting counting 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 427, 428, 429, and so on. Music is divided into bars, and the time signature tells us how many beats are in each bar. I'm keeping these basic theory lessons very basic. Okay, um, I know there are other videos where people are saying, learn music theory in 15 minutes. You'll be lucky, all right, having taught music in a classroom and as an instrumental teacher for 30 years. Um, keep it simple, learn it in little chunks. So note values, first of all, okay, you, know, you can actually see it in a pyramid form there. So you can see the whole note or the semi breathe at the top and working its way down to the lesser or shorter notes. Don't forget your rests that go with your note values because rests are as important as notes. You don't want to be playing when nobody else is. You've got to be very precise, okay? You've got to be very careful when you're drawing those notes so that the musician knows what they're reading. Time signatures tell you how many notes or beats fit in a bar and the bar is what divides music up to make it much easier for the musician to read. 
If you want me to do more complex theory, so for example, if we were looking at rhythm, I could look at dotted notes or some more complex time signatures or even some other rhythmic devices like syncopation, all right? Let me know in the comments or the questions below. Please give us a like if you've enjoyed and don't forget to subscribe so you don't miss out on new videos. Thank you for watching.